All right, guys, today we're going to talk about cortisol and the quality of sleep that you get. Um, now, cortisol actually is on a circadian rhythm, okay? Um, so you have these waves of hormones. So if we take a look at, this is the cortisol wave. Um, eight in the morning is when you have the highest cortisol levels, supposedly, in theory, right? And then it starts to decrease through the day, 12 noon, 4, 8, starts coming down, and then 8 p.m. over here, and then it hits its lowest between 12 and like 2 o'clock in the middle of the night, 12 midnight and 2 a.m., okay? This is when we're supposed to be sleeping, in deep sleep. So that's the normal uh, pattern that you're supposed to go through. Um, if these circadian waves are out of whack um, and you could have high cortisol in the middle of the night and low cortisol in the morning, okay? And so that's a situation where you just, in the morning is like, that's your best sleep. So just when the alarm clock goes off, that's when you really want to go to sleep. Yet at two o'clock in the morning or 12, you're like wide awake, like ready to go. Um, that's because your circadian waves are off. Um, and these circadian waves are influenced by a lot of different things. One is other uh, hormone-like neurotransmitters like serotonin or melatonin, which is made by the pineal gland in the brain. Now, the pineal is synced up with this tiny little clock in your hypothalamus, in your brain. Uh, it's called the suprachiasmatic nuclei. Not that you need to know that, but if you're ever on Trivial Pursuit and that comes up, now you know. So this gland that triggers melatonin, which helps you go to sleep, is triggered by darkness, okay? So no lights. So ideally, uh, before you go to bed, you should have lower lights, right? You shouldn't have bright lights in your eyes because it goes right to the eyes and then it triggers these, this cascade of hormones. And then in the morning when you wake up, you're supposed to uh, have light that wakes you up. The sun comes up, the light wakes you up. But because we're in rooms that are lighted all day long until we go to sleep, it can throw things off as well. And the ideal uh, time to go to bed would be roughly 10.30-ish. You know, you can go a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Now, you also have other waves going on uh, that are not directly related to cortisol, but you're like your sleep waves. You go through four 90-minute sleep cycles, okay? And uh, you go from a superficial sleep, which is the REM sleep, to the deeper sleep, which is called the delta. There's actually four levels there. And it's all synced with uh, the amount of light and darkness that your eye is exposed to. So I personally go to bed at uh, around 10.30, and let's see, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30, 30. So I'll wake up about five o'clock, so I'll get six and a half hours, and I am good with that. I don't really need anything else. In fact, in the morning, uh, at, at five o'clock in the morning, I can't sleep in. I am totally awake, and I'm ready to go. Now, I may take a little nap right here, a power nap. I can actually just go out within a minute and just, you know, 10 minutes later, wake up feeling refreshed. And I might maybe right around here or here, take that little power nap. But I found that when you do for intermittent fasting, the need for sleep goes down. You don't need as much sleep. So there are certain things that can really mess up your cortisol, okay? Physical stress, trauma, surgeries, emotional stress, losses. So chronic sustained stress over a long period of time can really mess up cortisol. Uh, too much caffeine in college. I drank pots of coffee, okay, to stay awake. Um, eventually my adrenals start going downhill. We have sugar that can create all sorts of blood sugar problems, insulin resistance. And what happens too, if you have a blood sugar problem is that when you go to bed at night, you might wake up because of a hypoglycemic reaction. When the blood sugars go down, okay, because in this situation, when you have blood sugar issues, you can't go for a long period of time without eating. So uh, normally you're eating like every hour and a half or maybe every two hours because you're always hungry or snacking. But when you go to bed, let's say you're going to bed at 1030, you're not gonna uh, potentially eat for another seven hours, right? Well, what happens with blood sugar problems is you end up with a hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. And you have counter hormones that uh, counter this drop in blood sugar. They're called counter regulating hormones. Uh, the big one is adrenaline. So adrenaline releases sugar uh, from stored sugar and it actually even can 
um, help you make new sugar, and we get this uh, adrenaline effect, which is basically just countering the low blood sugar, and it just pops you right out of that deep sleep. So this is why I recommend doing healthy keto and intermittent fasting to fix this right here. It's also gonna help improve your digestion to the point where you're not gonna get so much bloating because bloating in general can really interfere with your sleep cycles, okay? Then we have electromagnetic fields or electromagnetic frequencies. So like uh, this stuff right here on the cell phone, the computer all day long around power cables, uh, that can really throw off the pineal gland in your sleep cycles and increase cortisol big time. So um, watch my video on when I talk about EMF on this because it's quite interesting. Uh, overtraining with exercise can do it, just with no recovery. Uh, I've had people exercise too much and their pulse rate's so high, they can't seem to get it down. So the pulse rate in general keeps them from getting into a deep sleep. Um, but if you're not overtraining, a good amount of exercise can help you sleep. So it really all depends on your recovery system. But when you're sleeping, you're actually building up your recovery system. So the key is you know, optimizing your workouts. There are certain nutrients that you can take to actually reduce cortisol. Potassium is a big one. Make sure that you have enough potassium because potassium is a physiological tranquilizer. It calms the muscles down, the nerves down. And also vitamin B1 is really good to help reduce cortisol. This one right here, you'll feel it within minutes after taking B1. You'll feel the sense of relaxation. But this is a really important one right here because high levels of cortisol deplete your B1. They also deplete uh, your potassium and magnesium too. So magnesium is another one that goes along with potassium that can help calm you down and reduce cortisol. Another thing that's really good is walking like for like a half hour or maybe even 45 minutes. Uh, very good for cortisol, very good for the adrenals. It gets you into another environment and it really will help you reduce cortisol. All right, guys, those are the tips to help you reduce cortisol so you can sleep at night. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.